Hey everybody, and welcome to another one of my videos. So today we're gonna watch a presentation by John Willis of Special Operations Equipment. Uh, John was nice enough to come and put on this talk during the Living Free in Tennessee workshop in 2022. Uh, what can you say about John, but he is a unique character. He gives a great presentation, plenty of energy, and he's always interesting to talk to on pretty much any topic. For those looking for special operations equipment or just tactical equipment in general, definitely check out his website and his YouTube channel, both linked in the description below. And for anybody interested in hearing John, as well as many of the other people that have appeared on my channel speak, uh, this weekend he will be hosting a large get-together called the Self-Reliance Festival at his workshop. Uh, Tickets and information are at the website linked below in the description as well. So from there, let's let John get on with it. Have a great day. Not sure if you know this or not, but there's actually another great website for videos that doesn't deal with a lot of the censorship that you deal with on YouTube. If you're interested and it's a favor to me, please go over to odyssey.com and subscribe to my channel there as well. Uh, you'll find the link in the description below. Thanks. Nobody's gonna stand in my way. Give it up, son. I'm doing this my way. Entrepreneurship, whatever. I guess at the end of the day, every one of you needs to have money, right? You can't do any of the things you want to do without money. There's two kinds of homesteaders. There's homesteaders that stay so homestead that they have no money. They never leave the homestead and they have no idea that there's some other shit happening out in the world. <laughs> And then the other extreme is that they have so much money they can literally do anything they want to do on the homestead. So you have to decide which one of those two you want to be. Why are you listening to me? Because I've made millions and millions of dollars. I've lost millions and millions of dollars. I have no high school. I have very little high school education. I have very little college education. But I know how to run a business and I've run multiple businesses. And I have lost millions of dollars and made it back over and over and over. So you just have to decide what you want to do, I guess. Um, the big thing is just action. You're not going to do anything until you do something. And most of the people that you listen to that are telling you how to do things, what you will find is that a lot of them have not done all of the things they tell you to do. You'll find all these experts on the internet, and when you meet them in person, you'll find that a lot of them haven't done any of these things. They're just repeating things that they have heard over and over. So the takeaway from that is that you can do almost anything with what you want to do, and you're still doing more than a lot of the experts that you perceive to be experts. But you won't do any of it without inaction. I don't know how many of you guys watch my content. We've got content about all kinds of stuff. We put probably five videos a day on YouTube. I do a video every day on uh, live feed for two hours almost on YouTube. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, I'm all over the place. I don't know what to talk to you guys about. So you tell me what you want to talk about and we'll talk about whatever that is. Hey, John. What about how we can use our community to create accountability for ourselves? That's the big, like we have SOE do the things, right? I got that from Bear Independent. You'll meet him at our event, Living Free in Tennessee, uh, um, Self-Reliance Festival. I never want to say that. <laughs> I don't know why, it doesn't come out of my mouth. Um, Bear Independent will be there. We started doing SOE do the things because our live feed at nine o'clock turned from uh, politics and conspiracy theory to, yeah, that's all, fun shit, like we can do that, but at the end of the day, why do you know it? You know it because the cell phone is targeting you with it. Very few people, I see probably three people in here that actually wake up in the morning and turn the news on, right? We don't get it from the news anymore. It's from, it's from the cell phone. It's from, is it even called a cell phone anymore, right? It's from the smart device. It's from your tracking device in your hand. And that is targeted to you. They tell you what they want you to see. They tell you a little bit of what they think you want to see and then they show you what they're going to make money from. And it's constant fear, right? What if, what if it really is to a degree that we need to keep you in such a state of fear that you don't have action so we keep you on the systems, right? What if you really, every one of you has the ability to be happier and to have more energy and to have more productivity and have more financial freedom and have more just good relationships, right? But you can't literally because you're you're constantly in the fight or flight mode, constantly. It's always targeting fear. We need to keep you scared so that you do not achieve the level you can be. Why would that be? That's because the government needs you on their systems. 
I'm the biggest conspiracy dude in the world. You can throw any of those at me, but having been in federal prison, having been in a lot of local jails, I've seen the inside of that. I know how corrupt all of those systems really are, right? Because when you have more money, it, it's, it's legal for a fine, right? Like Spirico says, the more money you have, you don't go to jail. Politicians, kids don't go to jail for doing the things that normal people do. I can tell you with that said, there's never been a victim to any of my crimes. Like when I've gone to jail, it's for not paying registration and continuing to drive shit like that stupid stuff, right? I can also tell you I haven't been in 20 years, so maybe I'm not going back. Maybe I will. <laughs> my lawyer likes to point out, on the other hand, you know what the, you know what the execution of a federal search warrant looks like. So um, just that, right? Say you're going to do things. Tell people you're going to do things. That's not going to record you. And then, and then do them, right? Always do them, but always have something. Ask yourself every time. Like, I like to tell people, set a timer for one hour. Look at your life, right? Like, like okay, let's say you have eight hours. You're at, you're at work eight hours. You sleep for eight hours. And then you got another eight hours. So when everybody's talking about, I don't have the time to do these things, or I don't have the time for a business, or I don't have the time for my kids to go do what they want to do, right? What's that eight hours look like? Usually, it's sitting on a couch. It's on a phone. It's on a television, entertainment, amusement. The rawest form of the word amusement is amuse. It's no thought, right? Conspires to breathe together, amusement, no thought. So where is that eight hours at? I like to say look at it in six hour blocks because most employees who are at work, they work less than 40% of the time they're at work. So let's, let's just give them six hours. Let's just be generous and say, okay, six hours. So where's that other time at, right? So if you set a timer and you look at every hour and eventually once you've done it a few hundred times you won't need the timer anymore but at every hour did i use that last hour to the best of its ability do i have anything to show for that hour of time what can i do better with my next hour of time and this is for you this is this is going to literally change your life if you can lock down for 90 days and do this it's literally actionable every single person in this room can do that people pay Five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars to go to these seminars and get hyped up, and I can give you all kinds of motivation. I can get you walking out of here thinking you're going to be the karate kid, or you're going to go get in Brazilian <laughs> jiu-jitsu, or we're going to go into San Diego and we're going to go look at Ferraris right now because in order to buy something you have to visualize it, right? I can give you all of that. There's nothing actionable there. So all these people pay all this money, and you go to these. They, we call them success zombies. They go over and over and over and over and over, but they never do anything with it. So. That is actionable. You can look at that hour of your time, and do I have anything to show for it? But back to the accountability thing. Who's your friends? If you want to, you want to see how successful you're going to be, look to the, the, the just look to your three closest friends. Who do you spend the most time with? Who do you give people access to? Everybody's contagious. Everybody you're around, you're going to catch something. Like you see a dude, every time you see him at work, he's telling you about a bunch of people you don't know. You don't need to be around that dude. It has nothing to do with any bearing in your life at all. Does he add to you? Does he take away from you? Everybody's contagious. You're catching something. Be aware and evaluate what you're catching from them. So those people, will they hold you accountable? Are they holding you accountable just to be an asshole? If they're holding you accountable just to be an asshole, well, you, that's great. I work better in that mode. I work better in negativity than I do positivity. I'll probably die sooner because of it. But when people tell me I can't do something, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll show you. And we get 100 times the productivity <laughs> literally in that day than we would on any other days. If I'm peaceful and you don't see me posting shit, it's because there's not something I want. I'm not chasing something. If I have something I want, you will see performance, you'll see new products, you'll see new content, and you'll see a lot of revenue generation because that's how I work. So the hashtag to answer the question, we're using it as so we do the things. If you search it, you'll see tons of people. We have a couple of private groups. You have to be customers. There's certain ways to get in the group. You can't even find our groups. It's kind of prestigious to even be inside the groups. And in those groups, there are people showing accountability every single day, showing motion, showing progress to whatever it was they said they wanted to do. Anything else? Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I've been following you for eight years, and that accountability that you just said, that you need to stop talking about it and just fucking do it and show your it's just action, it, changed my fucking life, and that is why I am here. How? I used to be the guy that'd sit around and go, you know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the world. I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want, 
but I'd never do it. Why? Because I didn't want to do it. And now you have a YouTube channel and a podcast. I have a podcast and a Facebook now. page. We're working on the YouTube channel. We have we have the podcast page. There's a lot of evidence of success. Like Absolutely. I see I see content from you every single day. Absolutely. Showing that you're doing those. So it doesn't matter even I don't think it even matters if you're doing them to make content or you're making content because you're doing them perpetual motion. Right. It has momentum and as long as you keep that momentum up, it will always grow and it will always become easier. Mm -hmm. I come out and talk to people or I, I get on the live feed, right? Every night I do a live feed. It can be 30 minutes. It can be two hours. It all depends on the audience. I can stand and talk about anything you want to talk about. I cannot and will not talk about myself. So when I get on those things and they're short, I'm like, maybe we shouldn't even be doing these. What else could I do with my time? What else could I do that betters the people immediately around me and my family? Why do we build all this content. Why do I pay a dude thousands of dollars a week to sit here and put videos up if people don't reply to them? But then every time I say that, every morning I get an email. It's like, dude, I watched your video and I lost 50 pounds. Hey, I started a business. Here's a screenshot. I just made my first $10,000 a week. I just had my first $10,000 day. And it's just momentum. When you have a $1,000 day, it's not too long till you have a $10,000 week, $10,000 month, $10,000 day. It, it just scales. Once you have one, it just goes. Right. It just it just goes and it's if you're the person doing the thing showing the thing to to John Willis or sending me an email you may feel like you're in you're interfering with our day but you're not I live for that stuff Those, and, we'd rather talk to you guys yeah. than the asshole that I'm next to every day this yeah. is literally <laughs> I, I pay dues it's not to come bragging, in. Yeah. and it helps you keep moving forward to do that. I'd rather talk to a complete stranger about something he actually did with proof than some dude that I'm paying hundreds of dollars to be here and work 40% of the time, right? Typically, we hire employees that come in and sew. We have a big, we have a sewing shop, and then I hire guys that come in because they watch the content. People that work for me have moved from Alaska, they've moved from New York, they've come from California. We don't hire local guys. It's too easy for them in small town to go home and not come to work on Monday. We hire dudes that are into it because of what we're doing and want to be a part of what we're doing. Salatin told me, I went out and met Joel Salatin at the um, Rogue Food Conference. And he was outside taking notes and I said, you've got to be the best in this space, right? You're, like, You're the man. I've seen you on Rogan seven times. You still take notes? He goes, I don't ever know what I'm going to talk about till I walk in here. I talk about whatever they need to talk about. And a lot of this space, people who do what you want to do or know they know how to do what you think you want to do, they don't know that you need to know it. And you guys don't know that you need to ask the dude while he's standing there either. So. Okay, tough love time. Usually I just come out and yell at people. I yell. Yeah, I'd like you to yell at say, people. I just say, people, people like, ah, you, you fat shame me or you, you know, whatever, right? It's, it's always the, he's, he's mean. I don't like what that dude, I don't give a fuck whether they like what I say because yeah. usually I'm just saying it and I make videos every morning at 4.30, you pretty much just yelling at the camera because it's, it's what I need to hear. I make videos I want to hear and if one of you guys would make them, I could stop fucking getting up at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> So, okay, so we have a lot of people recently sharing that they're feeling very insecure about their ability to do the thing they think they want to do, and they're telling themselves negative stories. Tough love them. Give me an example. Like what? What are we like, talking about? Uh, one I, of them's got to be sitting here. Oh, Speak yeah. up. Who I, is it? I really need to make more money, and I want to start this thing, but I'm afraid to start it because I'm not very good at that. What if I fail? Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. How do you yeah. assess value? How do you assess value? That was totally What's my time word? Financial? <laughs> <laughs> What's my time worth? Yeah. Is that yes. what you said? Yeah. Yes. What, do you, what is your time worth right now? I don't know. What, what's the most amount of money you've ever made in an hour? In an hour? I don't know, like $10. 140 bucks. <laughs> 140 bucks an hour. So how do you make $140 an hour every hour? Right. Right? When I sit down, and this is going to sound super cool, right? The dude with all the cool cars and the fuck everything he wants, right? I sit down on a sewing machine. That's, how, that's what bought all the toys and lets me do, literally, I don't do anything that I don't want to do anymore. Like, I start every day not with what I have to do, I start with what I'm not going to do. Like, it just has become who I am. So, when I sit on a sewing machine, I make $1,000 an hour, consistently. I pay people to come in and sew in my sewing factory because I don't want to do it. Hit it, quit it, on to the next thing. When I buy exotic cars, when I buy expensive watches, whatever it is, 
it's just the chase. I'm after it. Once I have it, I don't give a shit about it. I wear, I've got watches. I, I have more watches than most people's house cost. I wear, I'm wearing a, a $600 watch, not a $60,000. I don't care once I have it, it's the chase. If I don't have the chase, I don't have the motivation. Mm -hmm. Some people will tell you, oh, you know, that's, a, that's an angry man, or he's gonna, you know, he's, he's not living to his fullest, or he doesn't know happiness. I don't know, money buys a lot of fucking happiness. My friends are pretty fucking happy. They're not friends because of the money. They're happy because they were there when we had nothing. My wife, we've split up a couple times. We've known each other 30 years. We've been apart, we've been together. She was there when there was nothing, and she was there when I had everything. And now we have more because she helps, you know, do the things I don't want to do is really what it comes, what is a man to do? Everything I don't want to do. And I won't do it, and I'll have less money because of it. But we're together literally 24 hours a day. I'm lucky I have a building that's 16,000 square feet. <laughs> I can be in my shop and not have a clue that she's there. And back and people are like, holy shit, how do you guys... He said some really mean shit. How do you, like, whatever I'm going to say to a stranger, I fucking promise I said way worse shit to her. <laughs> so, what is your time worth? What, I mean, I guess how much, I think how we look at time is different, right? Is it per hour? As, a, as an employer and a person who's run a same, the exact same company for 35 years, I look at everything as a dollar in minutes, right? So it equates. But do you have to? Do you have to have that money, right? Do you own your property? If you don't own your property, do you owe anything to the man, right? I spent a lot of years not paying the IRS. Owed them millions of dollars because I literally believed that society was going to collapse. I was on AR15.com and PrepperNet, and like I started half of those forums. Like oh, some of those forums you guys see today, that's my fault. I, I got to do that shit, right? So. When Jack Spirico came out, started podcasting, I liked what he was doing, and he had a different take on it, but it didn't stick in my head until eight years after I was listening to him, probably. I was in Tennessee already. I'd left California to escape California. I had warrants in California. Stupid shit. I had come home from prison. I was out of prison. Uh, I went to Lompoc Prison, went to Cal Poly, uh, Business 101, Business 102, Managerial Accounting, took all my business classes in prison after I already had millions and millions of dollars. Like while I was gone, I had 120,000 accounts receivable if we did zero. Like if I shut the business down, that money was still coming. Bored. So I took business classes, um, came home from prison, had three years of probation. The day I was off probation, we came to Tennessee, rented a house, moved here 30 days later. I moved to Tennessee to live in the middle of nowhere, almost as middle of nowhere as this in Camden, Tennessee because tactical response was out there. And I was gonna work with two employees. I was gonna have a garden, there, and we didn't have any codes or zoning. Guys still lived in sheds, and were shitting in a hole in the woods. So if they could do that, I could do anything I wanted to do, pretty much. And it just kind of scaled. I wasn't going to hire a bunch of people. I had a few people, and I was comfortable. And, if, if, and comfort is complacency, right? Complacency, with comfort leads to complacency. But I heard Spearco say, live the life you want if things get tougher, even if they don't. And I heard him say one day, he's like, all you guys held up in caves, living like the end of the world's gonna, call it, like the world's gonna collapse. And then before you know it, 10 years is 20 years is 30 years and you haven't done anything. So, I don't know why, but I bought a Range Rover that afternoon. She's <laughs> um, like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, I don't know, I'm just tired of sitting here hiding, right? Maybe it's time to not hide anymore. I knew that I owed the IRS money, I didn't know I owed them $3 million until they told me. Um, they didn't notify me because I wasn't open in their mail, right? I had buckets full of IRS mail. So I go to my attorney, who's a pretty good attorney in Nashville, and he's like, oh yeah, you need a way different attorney. So <laughs> he, start, he starts looking around, and uh, he's like, I think I found our guy. And he goes, uh, under qualification, he lists running with the bulls, in the Vietnam War. I'm like, all right, sounds, sounds like my kind of guy. So, we, to talk to this guy. so we, we meet this dude in the, uh, I go, how far are we going up this elevator after we've been in it for about five minutes? And he's like, all the way to the top. So we're looking down in the um, Titans Stadium and there's literally helicopters flying around like at eye level where we're having our meeting. I go, what's this gonna cost? He goes, oh, he's, he's the guy. 
So <laughs> I said, look, man, I've, um, I've been really good at making money, and I was waiting for society to collapse. And I kept thinking, this is the year, right? Y2K. And, you know, we were ready for Y2K. Every cop and tons of military dudes were at our place. And imagine our surprise when the power didn't work. Well, maybe it's, maybe it's uh, 24 hours, right? So, like, we were ready. We were ready. And nothing happened. And, um... You're welcome. <laughs> I go back and forth with myself whether I want that to happen. And I say that to say this, right? If society did collapse, if, let's just say the power goes out, right? Everybody in this room is on a level playing field, no matter how much money you have. It doesn't fucking matter how many millions of dollars in those zeros and ones that you have in there. It doesn't matter. Everybody financially is equal. And it's going to come down to your physical ability to retain those things. So how many good people do you have around you that are going to help you do that? Or is it just going to be the one person and then three guys are going to come up and just take all your shit, right? So I spent a lot of time hiding. I didn't have any social media presence because of it. And when I heard Jack say that, I went, I got online and I'm like, Range Rover, right? I would listen to a lot of rap music. I want something goes 200 on the dash. So what goes 200 on the dash, right? So I, I knew a Range Rover did because I heard the rap guys talking about it. <laughs> so I literally bought a Range Rover and they trucked it across from a Ferrari dealership in Florida. Um, and we had our social media presence kind of going, and this, this is kind of what has allowed me to do a lot of this. Yes, we sow things, but how did we get the eyeballs to middle of nowhere, Tennessee? And it's because I used people's negativity. When we would say things, um, I would just say things like, it's three in the morning, I'm leaving work right now, right? And guys would be like, when I was posting a picture with a $35 watch at three in the morning for eight years, nobody says shit. But when the watch became a $2,000 watch, you got some, oh, must be nice kind of shit, right? Uh -huh. When the watch became a $10,000 watch, there was a lot more of that. So I could say things very aggressively to people, and they would say things. It would just become a train wreck because we had very loyal customers, very loyal, loyal followers. But most of those people, when I say loyal followers, they're real live people who I've met in person. We have thousands of people who literally come through Camden, Tennessee, and I'm like, what are you guys doing? What are you, where, are you, where are you headed? And they're like, we came here. I'm like, we don't have Shamu. I don't have a Ferris wheel. Like, what did you come here for? They're like, I just wanted to meet you. I, I, I started a business. We were, you know, I just wanted to come and see you. So there was obviously something for that. It gave people access. <laughs> And I just, for, I don't think I'm qualified to say anything I say now. Like, I look at dudes because the guys I run around with and the guys that I consider friends and look up to are so much far that are beyond where I am. So I don't think I'm qualified to talk to people about anything, really. I've just been lucky that words come out of my mouth and sometimes people hear them, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't stay on one topic, as I'm sure you're wondering what the fuck I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> I, really, I don't know either. And we want to know the end of the lawyer story. So lawyer story. <laughs> so, so I go, look, I'm going to tell you a bunch of things, and here's a bunch of bank statements, and here's a bunch of PayPal stuff. And uh, I got all these titles to these cars and shit. I have all this stuff. I go, but I haven't paid the IRS ever. I'm like, I don't. I go, this is going to sound like drugs. It's going to sound like, you know, money laundering or something. I go... I have proof of every single thing I'm about to tell you. Two and a half hours later, he's like, yep, this sounds like drug money. He goes, we'll get back to you on this. So we walked out not even knowing if he was taking us off on it. I was a client. I said, what did this just cost? He said, $10,000. We were there about two hours. And uh, he calls back about a week later. He's like, we need to have a meeting. I go, what's that going to cost? He's like, $10,000. <laughs> so he's, Bob, come to find out, Bob was an IRS agent for 30 years. His right-hand dude in, the, in his firm was an IRS agent for like 20 years. So we had all these dudes, and the dude came up to me after we were talking. He goes, you are really lucky. He goes, you're exactly the dude we like to get, and we would have gotten you for sure. He goes, you... You're just in their face. He's like, you're like a fucking movie, man. He goes, you are always the guys we get. So I owed, how much did I owe the IRS? Three million. Three million dollars. I had to pay the IRS over $20,000 a week. Um, and I couldn't buy any shit. And the reason the eyeballs were there is because I would say really foul things or I would hurt people's feelings. But I like to say, you know, I can put a piece of content out or do give you, I can literally talk to you for five minutes and give you something you can leave here and actionably change the course of your life today. 
but everybody likes to watch the train wreck. If I say some foul, hideous shit, I'm gonna have 10,000 people over here, and I'm gonna have 10 people over here. It's why when you're driving down the interstate and it takes two hours to go, and you look, and grandma has a flat tire, yet nobody fucking helped her, right? It's because I want to watch the train wreck. They're looking for the carnage. So I gave them the carnage, and I was able to monetize the carnage. Guy would say something horrible, like, we had death threats. I'm going to rape your children. I mean, like, crazy, crazy shit. I would bring eyeballs to it. I would post the guy's name. I would post his phone number. I would post to what he said. And i go, hey, tell them what you think about it. So we would literally shut people's businesses down. We'd run their rating to a, a one-star rating. People, like, every, it just completely changed. It was, there was... Finally, there was a, a punishment, right? People are too comfortable saying mean shit through the internet because they've never been slapped in the mouth. I got beat up all the time as a kid because I was a smart ass. Like literally got beat up probably more than anybody in this room, but people have no fear of it anymore. There is no repercussion for your actions anymore. So there's a lot of groups like Fight Club and stuff. Like there's a lot of groups that are literally like that due to have never been in physical altercations, women, where there is a reaction to your action and there is a repercussion positive and negative um, but the IRS thing so had to pay them IRS dude comes into the shop my attorney there there probably six hours He's like do not talk to this guy don't answer any of his questions don't say shit to him they're there six hours they come back downstairs at the shop we've got a big 6,000 foot loft in there and the dude walks straight to me and I look at Bob Bob's like he goes, I just want to shake your hand. He goes, I don't know why you didn't file. I don't know why you didn't file. Um, why you didn't charge all this shot? What? Bankruptcy. I don't know why you didn't file bankruptcy. I don't know why you're trying to pay this thing off. You're the only person in the t my entirety of working for the IRS that's ever tried to pay this off at this level. And I just want to shake your hand. He goes, I'm glad you didn't hide any of this stuff because we literally spent the last year looking at every single thing you ever put on the internet, every photo, everything you said. He goes, I like you. He goes, but we would have fucking had you in prison for 10 years. So we paid it. I'm still paying it a little bit. But when I was able to go and spend money and buy crazy shit, I bought a, so after the Range Rover, I bought a Porsche six months later. Wire transferred the money to uh, Select Luxury in Atlanta. If anybody wants a car, I've got some great dudes for that kind of stuff. Um, bought the car, sight unseen. I, we went to buy, we went to buy, um, I just found a Porsche on, on uh, Craigslist. We went to a Jeep dealership in uh, Nashville, and I was going to buy a Jeep also. Had cash in, in a tool bag like that bag. And uh, they had this Porsche. Drive it. And dude's like, slow down. I'm like, bullshit. If I'm, I'm going to drive this thing if I'm buying it. They had all kinds of sensors. There's smoke coming out of it. And, uh, <laughs> and, and people don't, they have this perception, right? You have the perception that the dude has all this money. Most people that have that shit have no money. They live in, you know, mm -hmm. apartments and have a nice car or something. I bought that first Porsche. They wanted 30 grand for the one in Nashville. Retail on it's about 100. That should tell you something. That's a beat to shit car. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't, I go, I'll give you 25. And the chick was just, she was kind of mean, like the sales manager. She's like, yeah, he can put fucking 500, 5,000 on top of that. So we get to, we go to leave and they're like, what are you doing? I go, I heard what she said. I go, I'll buy one somewhere else. So we didn't buy the Jeep, we didn't buy the car. I got on um, eBay that night, found one, and the next day I called my bank manager and they wire transferred the money on a Saturday to select luxury. We drove there, picked the car up, took a picture of the car as I was walking in, and I had a thousand comments on that picture. I hope you die in that car. I hope your fucking kids die in that car. And, hey, welcome to the club. Hey, come to Road Atlanta while you're in town. Hey, come join Porsche Memphis. So both aspects, but with a thousand views on the account, I was able to put up a discount code with some of those heinous, hey, I hope you die kind of things, draw attention to them and give them a 20% discount. When I would run my discount on social media, I would make you tag whoever was saying the shit. So they would always have to remove their Facebook page. It would lock them down. And usually, and usually their relatives saw this shit. Their wives would be like, what the fuck are you doing on the internet? Their bosses, hey, you're fired. Like there was always, now, there's, now there were repercussions to your words. But we, when I did that first car, that car was $35,000. We went to a hotel in Atlanta, went and had sushi at some pretty shitty sushi place. And when we got to the hotel that night, there was $48,000 in sales off of that because of the elevated reach. By the time we got home, we'd done $100,000 in sales when we got home on Sunday. Six months later, I bought a Porsche Panamera, same place, same fucking deal. Took a picture of the car. 
thousands of comments went in. I'm just signing paperwork, talking to a dude about, he owns a llama farm. We're not doing any business. I'm just signing <laughs> shit. And I'm like, how do you make money in the llama farm? He's like, well, we grow Christmas trees and I have uh, this manor house and we have school kids come here and we do pumpkins. So, you know, multi-diversity kind of home farm stuff. So same thing, ran a code, made 120,000 that night and 200,000 in sales. The car only cost 100. So there's always a perception, it's just you're not looking at it. The people that know what you need to know, they don't know you need to know it, and you don't know to ask them when you have access to them. And that's the biggest thing, who do you give yourself, who do you give access to you? People come in, uh, you're like, your buddy ever call you up, like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? And you know he's going to ask you some shit you don't want to do? <laughs> I don't know, but not what you want me to do. <laughs> I won't ever help you move, I'll, I'll, send some, I'll send five guys in a truck to help you move, but I won't help you move, I don't do things. I only do things I want to do, and I'm lucky that I do the things I do. I did them for free for a long time. When I was learning how to sew, we'd be out diving in La Jolla at midnight, and I'd be in a hurry to get home and make something to hold the air uh, water bladder on the side of the tank. We'd be skiing in Big Bear. Uh, we'd be riding dirt bikes constantly. What can I do, right? I always wanted to get home and build and create some things. So I did it for free for a long time before I ever got paid to do it. And it just kind of took off from there. Like when I started sewing stuff, um, a buddy of mine, my cousin was going through Buzz. He was going to SEAL training. Met this guy uh, that had some stickers. Somehow he knew he was somebody. And he was a, it turns out he was a battalion reconnaissance rigger. And he made some gear. And we were going to, originally special operations equipment, we were going and buying a space at a swap meet in San Diego, which is very different than anything here. Flea markets in big cities take days to see. And we would go in there at six o'clock, we would buy a space so we could get in there before the place would open. And we'd go around to the women who had all the cool shit we want because they were selling off all their husband's stuff. <laughs> the divorce, whatever. So we were buying dive gear, camping gear, bows, archery stuff. And then we would take them and sometimes we would sell them at that, right there that day but we'd take them to gun shows. So we'd go to gun shows and we were printing t-shirts. My sister and I took a picture of her, I and my cousin, jocked up in some gear and put it on a shirt and said special operations equipment. And we sold thousands of those things. People just, oh, SEAL team, whatever, right? We had airsoft guns, um, took the photo black and white. It was called 386 line reversal. So they'd reverse the negative, but we could put like a legit photograph, white ink on a black shirt. And we were selling them back then for 10 bucks. And we sold, I made tons of money doing that, and then we made money. But we, I spent every dime I made ever at the gun show. I'd go and buy things I wanted and never did anything. So I never put the money into the company, right? If you can lock down in your company for five years and not buy any toys, that's the difference between making millions of dollars a year and making under a million dollars a year. If you, five years is that threshold. If you can bear that, work some job to pay your bills or have your bills paid for five years, five years, if you can do that, it's going to be millions a month instead of almost a million a year. Nicole, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. anybody can. Cool. Did you run the Cannonball Run? I have not. I've got, no, I haven't. And the Gumball Rally? Do you want to? Yeah, I've got. Because I've been really looking for someone to run it in the first take hand. No do you have a take hand? No, but I think <laughs> that's why I'm asking you if you want to run it in a poor take hand because no one's ever run it in a take hand and uh, I want to be the electric. You know, Ed? Mm -hmm. Bolian? Ben mm -hmm. Wiki? Okay, well, my buddy's the top salesman for Porsche, so we could probably put that together out of but Nashville. Is, but, but so we can't, we would obviously we film the whole thing, but you can't post it live. You post it afterwards, you'd make the money back obviously it seems like you would so are you putting this money up or am i putting this money up i don't make money off of my social media but um, <laughs> I, just want to run, I just want to run it um but the, uh, the reason i bring up in this room is that we need cop watchers around the whole down the whole route we have those yeah, oh, yeah i got i got buddies that do all that shit. so we could i i, I <laughs> i've been looking for like three years for someone to run the cannonball run but specifically in that car because i so I don't know if I'm the dude, but I can put you with the guy. Okay, we can, that's easy. So you never know what's going to come out. You want to break, 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 <laughs> breaking the law is always easier than working within the law. And people get so stuck on allowed versus able. 
Think about how many things you do every single day. Like what, what's the biggest frustration? I don't need an answer. What's the biggest frustrations in your life? And what are they caused by? And most of them, if you're if you're operating in the mindset, it's it's government, local government, it's politicians really, it's bureaucrats, right? Like bureaucrats are always interested in the process instead of the outcome. How many people I want to start a business, but I can't afford a business permit. I want to start a business, but I can't have insurance. I didn't have fucking insurance on my business until, I don't know, two years ago? I've been in business 35 years. <laughs> Lucky, maybe? I don't know. I just knew that if I got a lawsuit, I could make the money in a couple weeks to pay for it. So why pay the insurance? How many of you have actually executed on insurance? I mean, it's just we're programmed not to move. We're programmed against moving. And I know I'm saying a bunch of shit that you guys are like, why am I sitting here listening to this guy? This isn't what I came for. But if you walk away a week from now, two weeks, a month, it's going to click at some point, and it's going to register that you can do a lot more than you think you can do. Don't, I mean, I lived in I lived in HOA in San Diego. We had rabbits. We had chickens. We had a business. I had people pulling up left and right. I had the cops coming over writing tickets about a trailer every couple of days. I literally had the police come and tell me that I had to move the firewood we cut up in the front yard that was stacked really neatly as a border and shit. So we just kept doing it. They don't really have a lot of teeth. There's not a lot of enforcement. And I guess really it's just what you're comfortable with, what area you're able to operate in. I mean, usually my audiences are a little darker than this, so. <laughs> We had more hope. <laughs> I don't, know if, it's, I don't, I don't know if it's hope or just willing to say it. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll come to your house and burn your fucking house down and you fuck with me. Like that's that's literally like people don't realize that there are people amongst you that you touch shoulders with every day. Like, I'll never do anything to somebody who hasn't done something to me, but I, I mean, there are people out there that will, will really, and they'll end it quickly, and you won't know what happened to them. And the only thing holding society together right now is the perception that there might be a repercussion to something that they do, right? That literally, every single day, whether you realize it or not, there are people that literally kill people for no reason. Yep. Literally, within two, three blocks of where you roam every single day. People have no idea how heinous and insidious that is. There's, there's kitty prostitution happening right out here at the interstate at the hotel. People don't want to see that. They don't want to look at it. It's definitely there, 100%. Saw it last night. It's just what you're able to maneuver in, and when you realize that the world is not how you perceive it to be, right? A lot of people, well, don't worry about that. Let's just always focus on problems. That's awesome until something happens in society. You saw all these cities burn down a couple years ago. You know, why, you know why Nashville didn't have a bunch of cities burned down? They tried to, because they killed a bunch of fucking people in Nashville. You guys didn't hear that. Wasn't on the news. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't there. I, had a, I was on a video with a dude. I go, who's shooting? They were killing a bunch of people in Nashville because Tennessee isn't going to do that shit, right? You need to have those ideas in your head, though. If this, then that. When the dude comes through your door, are you calling 911 or are you handling it yourself? Are you trained to handle it? Have you done it over 3,000 times? Can you bring that gun out of concealment wherever you're at without having to stop and think about it? What's your spouse going to do, right? Is she getting the kids? Is she, like, there's a whole conversation to be had that people don't want to have. And it, it applies to everything in your life. It is really all about mindset, though, to your point earlier about, you know, people busy worrying about what they can't do because I've never spoken with you before. Um, most of the people in this room know that I'm blind and that changes your um, from your from your earliest upbringings. It's not, well, you can't do that because you're blind. It's how can I do that differently to um you know, to complete the same task. And a lot of times there might be some pretty serious logistics that you have to overcome, but you just have to be uh, willing to be open-minded and creative and willing to at least try. Yeah. So with that being said, if you want to teach me to run one of your sewing machines for the lulls on social media, I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> 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 that's, a, that's a 
that's it. That's cool. faster than that's anybody. Cool. It sounds a hell of a lot less scary than all these yeah. people who keep trying to get me to drive their cars. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a gun permit? I do. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just mindset, right? Yeah. It's not, it's not I can't afford this, it's how can I afford yep. this. Yes. How many times, I'm, I'm sure everybody's been to some fundraiser, foundation, right? I'm lucky to have say that I'm friends with a lot of those dudes. How many people get shot in the finger and die out of shock or get shot, you know, yeah. someplace, mm -hmm. small caliber round mm -hmm. and literally just die? Oh, I'm dead. You know, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. How many guys know people missing limbs who've come back from Iraq or Afghanistan who have done five, six, seven deployments? I know guys that have been blown up on three separate deployments, mm -hmm. missing a leg and an arm, mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. with the SEAL teams. Yeah. Still. It's just mindset. Yeah. It's, it's how can we accomplish the mission, what is the mission, and how do we accomplish the mission. Yeah. That's it. That's all there is. There's nothing, there's a lot of bullshit in between, but there's no, we, when we go to other countries and do things we're not supposed to do, we don't worry about legalities and regulations. So why are we worried about regulations from somebody who has no teeth, who you've never met, who will probably never show up? And it's harder for them to show up if you have a date. Yes. Yeah. Spoken by the person who has no gate. So we have, uh, <laughs> I've, lived, yes. I've lived in Camden for 12 years probably. My logo for my company says made in the motherfucking USA. It goes on over 20,000 pieces of gear that go out of my shop every single month. I sell over $10,000 in merchandise that is nothing other than a shirt, hat, or sticker that says made in the motherfucking USA. And we had a sign out front, and it had been there for about six months, and somebody realized it was there. You have to slow down to about 20 miles an hour on a 55-mile-an-hour road to be able to see it. And he started coming around and stalking all this shit on the Internet, and that my, my grandkids and my children, his, his daughter's a porn star. <laughs> so I'm not real too concerned about his grandkids. And you had to trespass to take the photo that you took from my property. And it turned into a big shit show. And I go, look, man. I'm out of city limits. I don't have a sign code. I don't have anything. You can't do shit. But I, if you do pursue this, I go, I'll put up a 60-foot sign that blinks. And if I, put it up, <laughs> if I put it up 80 feet and put a beacon on top, you can see it from the city. I go, I'll make sure you see it. I go, not only that. And it kept going. It kept going. And I, I had Barry Sign Company come out. And they go, yeah, we can't do this. You need so-and-so. So we had the company out of Dixon come out. And I go, okay, $120,000 for this sign. I'm not going to pay a dime for it. I'm going to crowdfund it. I'm going to have this thing. And literally when I said that, dudes were like, I'll put up 500. I'll put up 1,000. So just in there, before we even did a GoFundMe or anything, we would have had it paid for. So just small town politics stuff is really what I'm talking about, though. A guy, I don't know what even set this off, but um, our tax assessor, we got some new tax assessor in town. And in our town... They don't, it, what do you think a uh, property tax is, right? It's real estate, right? But in a business, it's not. It's everything that you own. So they want to assess this, right? They want everything. I had an old building up the street full of, it's really a storage unit full of products I started and haven't finished, and they want to assess it. And every year they assess this. And I tell my attorney, I'm like, Dana, man. He goes, John, they want 1200 Just pay it. Just pay it. Like, you're going to pay me more for the conversation. But this dude shows up at our shop. And I have a whole big upstairs. And he's like, can I look upstairs? I go, oh, no. What? I go, you don't have enough guns. He goes, what? I go, you better come back with fucking more guns because you don't have enough guns for me to allow you upstairs. I go, check it out, man. You just got this job, right? He goes, yeah. But we ever met? I go, I've lived here 15 years. We ever met? He goes, no. I go, that's because I keep to myself. I go, I stay here on my property, and I don't fuck with what you do on your property. I go, but I will spend... I go, if you're here, you have some kind of idea of what I do and what I can do. I said, I'll spend every dime I have this year to make sure you don't have this job next year. I said, go someplace else. Don't ever come back here in this capacity again. I go, we can be friends. We can help each other out. I go, go talk to the sheriff and ask him if you should come back out here. And we haven't seen that dude in three years. <laughs> it's just because people aren't willing to say, them, say no, and he's never dealt with somebody who will hurt you. I don't ever have to hurt anybody. I'm fucking one of the smallest dudes in this room. It's just the ability, though. It's just the willingness. And you guys all need to operate as though everybody can hurt you, even the people you think can't. But 
else, guys? I got a positive one for you. So, I, w I learned from Jack to tell a story. Mm -hmm. I've been to your shop a handful of times. Every time I go over there, I buy shit, you give me shit. So I took those two things and got a, how do you like that stiletto in your pocket? Yeah, I love the stiletto. She asked me if we if we could get if she wanted it. I go, well, do you like that flashlight? She goes, yeah, you gave me this bullshit light because you didn't give me another stiletto. Yeah, I love the stiletto. Mm -hmm. I, this stiletto has quite a story with it. I never would have bought this light because it's rechargeable. And I am of the belief, you know, as the survivalist, we just call it survivalist, like prepper's the clean word now, survivalist is the bad word. But I actually saw Rambo and Red Dawn in the movie theater. I carried, I carried an M1 carbine to school with me for the next two years every day in my friend's truck. And my science teacher knew we had loaded carbine magazines in my pockets and my school was different then. And I was in San Diego, I wasn't out here in the middle of nowhere. So I guess the loud versus able. Um, but I always thought you should be able to take the lights out of these, right? We go in a lot of abandoned buildings and a lot of places you're not supposed to go and get really cool photos because people are scared to do things they're told they can't do. Um, and a guy walked in and he's like, I go, how do you like that light? He goes, I don't really like it. I just went through some, some combatus courses and I don't like the back button on this thing. He goes, here, you can have it. I go, really? He goes, yeah, but let me tell you a cool story about that light. He goes, I'm a paramedic. And he goes, we showed up on a scene, a 911 call, where a dude cut his hand off with a circular saw. I go, wait a minute. What is that? What do we, what do we, paint me a picture. He's like, the hand is on the ground over here, and the dude is over here. I go, how do you, like, I can see accidentally cutting yourself. I saw an arm get cut off with a band saw, but a circular saw, like, some dedication. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he goes, he goes, okay, so we load the dude up and we've got the hand. And he's like, fuck, we can't walk in. We're about to walk past all these glass and I've got this hand in a fucking Ziploc bag. He's like, I know. He's like, I got an SOE grocery bag. So they walk it in. And that's that dude. That's how I met that dude. He gave me this light that's in my pocket right now that I use every single day. Literally every day. And I got a cool guy cut a handoff story. <laughs> in the grocery bag. So yeah. there's like four or five of you I've done that to. Like I, I carry cool guy shit in my pockets just for that. <laughs> yeah, we always give more value. Whatever you think you're getting, we give you a little. We actually give you what you give us. So if you're an asshole, I'm going to be a hundred times more of an asshole. If you're super cool to us, we're going to be at least ten times. <laughs> I have more meanness than I do niceness, I guess. Um, just everybody's got a story. Everybody has something. You're going to catch something from every single person you come in contact with. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you want what you're about to catch. And everybody also has something they can add to you, but you don't know that they know it, and they don't know that you need to know it. And most of the time, there's not a right or wrong way. There's just a way. Like, any of you, know, uh, any of you guys have rabbits? And you in these like rabbit groups or these Ooh, these chicken that. groups on Facebook? <laughs> Hello. Holy shit! <laughs> you can't have two rabbits in that cage. You can't keep rabbits on that. You got to suspend rabbits. You got to have rabbits on the ground. Oh no! Right? If there if these all these ways were the wrong ways, how do we have rabbits today? Why aren't they extinct? Right? <laughs> Grandma had them. Our grandparents had them. Yeah. Just do things. Right? Stop asking. Oh, you know, anybody have a freeze dryer? Anybody can. Those are the fucking worst. Harvest, <laughs> harvest right? Uh, retired at 40? Dude's awesome. Yeah. The group? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Canning, Rebel Canners, great Facebook group? Holy shit. <laughs> you can't do that. Grandma did it. Yeah. You guys, anybody have the, a canning or blue book? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yep. you know, they've changed a lot. Yeah. They have one from 30 years ago, yeah. 50 years Holy shit. <laughs> We're here. And that, what they did didn't kill us, right? I grew up thinking that pressure canning was a, a bomb, right? Because yeah. my mom said it. My mom never fucking, my mom, sorry. My mom never canned. My grandma canned all the time, and it didn't kill us. So what were you going to ask, man? I just wanted to tell you, in person, I appreciate your videos in the evening where you're doing stuff. And every time I see it, if there's something that I've been putting off, you know, because I didn't want to go do it, but it needs to be done, I want to show you <laughs> it's just it's, it's actionable execution right why do i do a video at nine o'clock because nobody else does everybody does their live videos during the day i'm working during the day i'm working at night when somebody shows up in town a friend shows up and i give them an hour of my time right 
when I spend an hour at noon or four o'clock or five o'clock in the day, I don't stop at 10 o'clock. I stop at 11 o'clock. I still do all the things I was going to do that day. Those animals, uh, Needy likes to say heartbeats on your property, right? Needy Bali, heartbeats. I have a thousand heartbeats on my property. They don't care if it's raining. They don't care if it's cold. They don't care if I drank too much the night before. They don't care. It, it has to still be done. And it's just do something, right? That's why when I sign off, I'm like, look, that's probably the most important part of the whole two hour video we do every night. I walk around my factory because it's accountability. It shows that number one at nine o'clock at night, I'm still there. And it shows that we US manufacture. You see so many places talking about US manufacturing, especially in my industry, I guess, that we operate in. And they talk US manufacturing, you never see a sewing machine. You never see machines running. You never see employees because they're full of shit. They don't manufacture in the United States. They put a tag or a laser logo on that says made in the USA. We show that and we ship. We put nine, $960,000 to our post office this year already, shipping from US manufacturing around the United States. So it's just doing the things. And when I sign off, that's what we always tell guys. Look, when you get off of here, ask yourself, are you gaining from this or are you losing? Because if you're not gaining, you're losing, right? You're being programmed to. You're, it's changing the course of your day by what they show you. Yep. So be aware with what you're watching. Is it adding to you or is it adding <coughs> from you? Because all you hear all the time, every, every single person through the day sometimes, somebody comes up and inserts themselves into a conversation. I want to do this. I want to have this. I want to go here, right? But then they give you a hundred reasons why they can't because they don't want yeah, to. They just whenever I have that thought, I've, I've got YouTube Premium, so I can turn the phone off, stick it on my case, mm -hmm. and I go to yep podcasts, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. audio books are great for that, and you can just action while you while you're listening, right? If I need to move quicker, I listen to music, move music, especially during workout. Like one of faster music. Yeah, faster music, aggressive <laughs> music. Yeah, it raises your heartbeat. Yeah. And be aware, too, like a lot of, especially in the prepping community, I see tons of this nonsense. I've got $15 to spend. What should I buy? You should probably figure out how to make 30 60 you know, one Yes, yes. But people do that for the same reason we shop, right? And it's not just girls. Girls <coughs> buying shoes and purses. I have more shoes than she has. He does. <laughs> it's, and it's because it's like having sex, right? It releases endorphins, and you feel good when you spend that money. It's, it's a destination, we're gonna go here, we're gonna collect these things, we're gonna bring them back, and we're never gonna look at them again, we're never gonna use them, and they're not ever gonna be of benefit most of the time. I feel good when I get the things that I know. Yeah, yeah, and that's, 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 I think for me it's the same endorphin. And there's, and guys on social media only show you guys are like, man, you get up at 4.30 every morning and you go to bed at 12.30, I go, I only show you what I want you to see. Yeah. <laughs> there are Saturdays when I sleep till four. Mm -hmm. So, but having that accountability, and that's part of the accountability, right? I know that when I get on there tonight, dudes are going to be like, what did you do today? Well, here's, here's the, like, I've already got the photos ready, right? I've already went, I, there's literally days I don't want to do shit, and I go do it so that I can tell people when they ask me. So how am I going to tell them what they should do if I'm not doing it myself? And I think that's the big thing. You should, <clears throat> there should be evidence of success. For all of those people that you can take some piece away from people, but there's a lot of dudes out there, especially in the in this space and the tactical space, especially that are telling you all these things. And when you go there, it's all horseshit. Show up, show up. And don't show up Saturday, Sunday. Show up there on a Tuesday and see what's happening. Like these dudes, they don't live on the properties. They're not homeschooling. They aren't off the grid. They live in a park. Like there's crazy shit going on. Yeah. But we have this perception that we want to do these things and be aware, like. Even if you're doing less than those guys you're watching, a lot of those guys aren't doing what you think they're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you try to do it the way they tell you to, and it fails miserably mm -hmm. because it's never worked to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They never actually do it. They're just telling you what, what they think will work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this, there's a dude, there's a dude supposed to be the pig guy, right? Perma pasture pigs and does all this stuff. And we got a buddy that, that really does pigs, like, like trained. And like he met this, he, they were going to kill this pig and, He's like, how many of these pigs have you killed? He's like, oh, I killed a couple. He's like, oh, I thought you killed hundreds of these pigs. Like, this dude had not a clue. And he's like one of the top dudes. It's just, just be aware. Just be aware.
Like, don't ever think you're doing too little or, well, I always think you're doing too little. You can always do <laughs> don't, don't think, you know what I mean? Like, just because the dude that's supposed to be the premier in the space took him time to convince you he was that, you know? No, that's, that's why I'm not a lot of the here because it's legit. So actionable accountability, right? Actionable evidence of success. And that's why, like, we do parties at my place, and they used to be huge parties. We have 1,000 people, 900 people show up, literally from around the world, Japan, Finland, New Orleans, Sweden. Like, every time we would do one of these, we'd have dudes that didn't speak my language. I'm like, where the fuck are you from? <laughs> I go, what are you here for? You taking classes at TAC? And they're like, no, we came to SOE because of the party, right? We'd have rock bands come in and... Um, food trucks, machine guns, we have tons of these things going on. So when COVID happened, they started talking about lockdowns, and my plan was, you don't have enough guns, you better come back with more people, you better get somebody from out of this town, because we're not shutting down. We went and bought 3,600 pound concrete barriers, we put in 40,000 of fencing, we doubled our lights, extra camera systems, we did a ton of shit. But we didn't ever shut down. We immediately started making masks in case anybody came and said you're non-essential. We were making masks. We sold 20,000 masks. At least. Shipping them all over the world. I got two of them. So, huh? I got two of them. So, so that was our plan all along was, no, we're not, we're not going to do that. But we, so we wanted to do a couple get-togethers and stuff. I was kind of watching all these people come in and out of town from attack response. James was still running classes and nobody was dying. I'm like, hmm. They probably should have died already. What's going on over here? <laughs> Nobody died. So we just kept doing business, and I just started saying, "Hey, we're going to have a, a get together. It's not going to. We're not going to have a lot of food trucks, no machine guns here. But if you want to come and hang out, come hang out." And we had 250 people show up twice with zero promotion, no money behind it, nothing. They showed up like we didn't even have pizzas. I'm like, holy shit, this is a lot of dudes here. <laughs> so, all right, you're here. What do you want to do? Like, people always like, I want to hang out. I'm like, I don't hang out. You want to hang out? Come to one of the events. Like, that's the only time you're going to see me sit down and actually have a drink and talk to you about stuff that's not this, right? So they all showed up. And what they wanted to see was the, the, aquas, the aquaponics. They wanted to see the chickens. They wanted to see the rabbits. They wanted to be like, you guys are really interested in this stuff. Like... So I spent 16 hours walking around, chasing these guys and just spending as much time. And I'm, uh, this is how I talk all the time. This is, this is exactly what you'll get at midnight if I'm talking. So I move around a lot. And she's like, you look fucking beat. I go, I am. I don't know what happened to me. And she's like, you look really tired. So that's what it was. People, I just I give them that energy and I, I give them that time. And if a dude comes from Japan to my compound, we're going to talk as long as that motherfucker wants to talk. Like, he flew out here to see us. So when we go to a trade show and my new guys are there, they're like, what should I expect? I go, get ready. Performance, like, game face, right? They're like, what do you mean? I go, you'll see. And that's what we're here for. We're here to talk to our customers as long as they want to talk about anything they want to talk about. And until that dude stops talking, you're not done. So we did a few of those. We did two of those things. And then I, Nicole Steele, and I said, hey, I think that there's really something here, right? Jack can only get 30, 60 people on his property. We already know we can get 1,000 on ours. I go, let's do And she goes, what do you want to do? I go, not really this, right? I, I don't, it's not my thing. I, I got all the guys and stuff. I go, but homesteading, what I found is both aspects, right? You've got dudes that never leave, and you've got guys that can do whatever they want. I go, how do we bring the money guys together with the other people so that they can all do business together, right? And how do we bring... The tactical guys, like, we started marketing to the Overland community because our market was, it was just inbred, right? I have tactical response in town. James has 1,000 students, you know, 7,000 now, a year come through. And I have overlapping customers, and I want their 1,000, let's say they have $1,000 every year to blow, right? They can train, they can buy bullets, or they can buy gear. I want all of it. James wants all of it. So we started marketing to guys that had Jeeps and Toyotas, and we bought Toyotas that year. And what we found was every dude that owns a Toyota truck has a gun, but very few of them train. So we can get them into our gear and expose them that to community and bring in fresh blood into the community. How do we merge them? And that's kind of what I want to do with our thing. We have a lot more people show up. We have people show up that are my longtime customers that have no idea about homesteading that now all of a sudden they're buying complete farms. Trisha mm -hmm. buying a whole damn, she's in town right now. 
Um, we have going to be staying at my place for like three weeks. Yeah, you're going to be exhausted. <laughs> you might I'm always some, exhausted. It's fine. You're going to need some chemicals to bring you up and some chemicals <laughs> to bring you down. Um, but it's just merging them, right? It's just merging them. And you never know who your best asset's going to be. It could be totally the guy that your first perception of. Like, I don't need to talk to this person at all. And that might be really with the, the one second on the hand of the clock that's the deviation. You're, you're moving at 12 o'clock, and then at 12.01, five miles down the road, you all of a sudden don't see each other anymore. That could be that slight deviation that takes you where exactly where you want to be, and you didn't know you wanted to be there. So I don't know. Hopefully some of that sticks somewhere. And John, you've got how do you pick your next project? Or how do you pick your next project? I don't. Project? It's organized you chaos, man. You mean what we're building tomorrow? <laughs> or, like, yeah, how do you come up with... Uh, let's make a small tack rig. Let's make a big tack rig. So guys are constantly like, what are you running tomorrow? I go, the real answer is whatever I think I'm running tomorrow, it's not going to matter because at 1 o'clock this morning, I'm going to have an email from some .gov, .socom, .fbi, whatever it is. Um, the guy that squeals the loudest a lot of times gets the best help. A lot of times he also gets crushed. Um, I build stuff now. Really, for about the last decade, I build stuff just because I want to build. And I'm just super lucky that guys want to buy what I'm, I'm really stuck on that. I don't do anything. I don't want to do anything. Been working like leather and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I walked into an Oakley store right after we moved to Tennessee like 15 years ago. Cool camouflage, a lot of metal industrial shit looked really neat, lifestyle. And I, as a dirt bike guy, you know, I'd always heard uh, they sold out, right? They went corporate, right? No fear or life's a beach is in uh, JCPenney's now or, you know, Walmart or whatever. They're not the hardcore guys. Well, yeah, they, they don't hate money, right? <laughs> Jesse James made all his money selling shirts in Walmart. So just kind of that. So I, I just kind of build things that I want to build now. Um, oh, the Oakley thing. I said we should do lifestyle stuff. And as soon as we started making wallets, we made triple the income, right? Everybody wants a $700 NSW chest rig. And we got a couple thousand out there. But the SEALs, there's, how many SEALs are there today ever actively operating? 300 maybe? So they get them, a sister platoon gets them. Guys buy them because they want to weave a story to their wife where she accidentally sees it in the trunk. Walter Mitty, there's a lot of that. Um, and then guys that just buy them for a case. But when we started selling $25 wallets, the money went up. When I started selling t-shirts, as long as you have eyeballs, you can sell merch. I make more money on gummy bears every year than I make doing what I really make. I buy gummy bears for a dollar a pound, and I sell them for ten dollars a pound. <clears throat> Sorry, it's still in there. Um, so, if you got eyeballs, you can always sell stuff. What are we building? Whatever we want to build, and we just right now I'm using scarcity marketing. So, if you don't know what anybody know what Supreme is, Supreme Clothing. Okay, so you got these guys that do these pop-ups in New York and stuff. They show up with a three-dollar T-shirt that's printed and says Supreme on it. They sell them for $45. People kill and stab each other over these things. The secondary market is where it's at. They take them on eBay that night and sell them for $1,000. Um, Hype Beast, that's like, it's, it's probably a much younger genre that I'm talking about. But how do I sell every single thing I make in under two minutes? Because if I can sell 100, I only make 75 of them. Hit it, quit it, on to the next thing. If I, we spent COVID building 48 chest rigs every single day for two years, sold every one. We built 48 because that was our capacity. That's what we could build. Dudes right now are like, hey, when are you build chest rigs? You just had two years to buy a chest rig. Why didn't you buy a chest rig? I've got backpacks today. And we're constantly back and forth so that we don't ever oversaturate our, our market of income. So, I don't know. I do the leather stuff because I like it and uh, put the stuff on it. Anytime I sew, it usually takes me about two hours on a project. I never put them for sale. We always auction them off. And then you have thousands of people watching the auction. You've got about 100 bidding of who are really four or five people are really viable real end, use, end buyers. Uh, but it drives it, right? So we auction off at anywhere from 2000 to $2,500 every time we do it. And then the guys that see that happen are like, oh, I better buy this rig when it's $100. As soon as he drops them. Leads into the next question, how do you set your pricing? Whatever you're comfortable with. If you're comfortable with your prices, you're not charging enough. Mm -hmm. I want to be, 
and and my thing all along is I'm not Ford. I'm not trying to put a I'm not trying to put a car in every driveway. I'm Ferrari. If I want you to buy my shit, I'll call you and invite you to buy my stuff. Now I got that from my buddy Horton. He makes a few hundred knives a, a year. He sells them for five hundred. Guys resell them for two thousand, three thousand. Oh man, if I want you to buy my knife, I'll call you and tell you to buy my knife. Ain't going to like he he talks like that. <laughs> <laughs> and he said something a long time ago. He's like. And he always sounds, he's like Boomhauer from, <laughs> oh man, I wear, I'm a knife maker and I wear, you know, a pair of pants that cost $15 and a shirt that a friend gave me and I wear a really expensive watch so that other dudes with really expensive watches will buy my shit. And he said that part like not in Horton voice. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 God must have wanted me to hear that clearly. <laughs> so, and it just stuck and it worked. When when we started doing that, other dudes came. Like I made a watch, I made a video with a watch. I bought a, a huge I went to buy a watch um, at Audemars in Las Vegas. Um, Seventy-five thousand dollars. So what it cost. And we walked in with a couple dudes with a video camera and the dude immediately like, you can't film in here, we're owned by Louis Vuitton. I go, we film in Louis Vuitton all the time. If I'm about to give you $75,000 in cash, I need to be able to video this. And he goes, you can. So I'm like, okay. So we went to Hublot and I bought three watches from Hublot and we videoed it and they pulled out all kinds of stuff. Because of that video, this guy hits me up on my video and he goes, hey, I collect Hublots. I would like to buy one of those. Where can I get one? And I'm like, if a guy's asking about this and you don't know where to get it, he's not, it's just some bullshit. And I answered him. I said, hey, my friend Robert Baum in Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas Hublot can help you out. And he came back. He's like, hey, I just bought one. Thank you, my friend. What's your address? I want to send you a gift. So a couple of weeks later, these boxes show up from uh, UA, United Arab Emirates. And they're wooden boxes, and they've got residue on them. I'm like, this motherfucker sent us a bomb. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you take these out and open them. Well, he sent me a couple Seven Fridays watches. So we became friends, and that dude... That dude does over $100,000 every year with my company buying our merchandise. Turns out he's a prince in Saudi Arabia. His father is the uh, minister, minister of defense for Saudi Arabia. But you never know who you're going to meet. And you never know. Like when we do these, we do knives and we put them up and I sell them. Uh, they start at two grand. The run, there's 24 pieces. It's 45 grand is what it costs. I can't put them up all at once because he will buy them all. <laughs> He'll buy every one of them. So we just kind of build stuff that we want to, I, and I, and I oftentimes question like when guys are like, Hey, what should I do? I question if I could do this all over again from zero without having the history, right? When I came home from prison, it was almost seamless. Like I was gone, I was in Lompoc for 22 months, came home, hit the ground. I did a million dollars in sales, 900 some thousand dollars the first year I was home on probation in mom's garage. And I question it without the history, could I do that, right? Without people knowing. But then, I mean, we, we've started over kind of from there and went forward and made, so, I, I don't know if I'm always the guy to give business advice. The other thing is you put in the work. Yeah, yeah, I mean, somebody told me a long time ago, in business you have to have one of two things and it's like the scales of justice, right? You have to have money or you have to have knowledge. And I think you can replace either one of those with work. Just, just the sheer will not to quit, right? How many people have been told, hey, you've got two years to live? And some of them go home and they live two years. And then other people, you know, two weeks to live. And then all of a sudden they go home and instead she's like, no, I like goats. I'm going to buy some goats. And now 10 years later, she's a huge YouTube channel and she's not, she didn't die, right? It's just what you're willing to accept, I think, a lot of times. Mm -hmm. The sheer willingness not to quit. Awesome. We're at class.